Hey guys, it's Artem here. Let's discuss how to be better as a mobile developer and a software engineer in general. How to build better apps, uh, how to build better user interfaces, and in general, make better decisions when you build apps in Bubble. Over the past three years, I've been using Bubble to build apps. Uh, through this journey, I constantly ask myself uh, what clear steps I need to take to, my, uh, to make my app stand out from the rest. So I identified uh, five tips that uh, will make your app stand out from the rest and will make you a better bubble developer. Uh, today I will share it with you, so let's start. So the first is planning. So I think this is super important step, but it's uh, kind of sound uh, super simple, but I think this is this one is the most important because I catch myself a lot of times starting to build the app to to then realize at the end or after a month of building that I need to make some adjustments to my database and change the structure and I spend a lot of time and it's really hard to ch to make some changes to the, to the existing app so you need to rebuild the database from the from the ground up so I I think you we uh, you was uh, you always need to start with planning and I will discuss how I do my planning. Um, usually I do this in Figma or in, in any wireframe uh, app. Like it can be anything. Uh, the main thing is it should work for you. It, you, you need to understand it uh, and uh, make your uh, uh, life easier. So it can be uh, this, this type of diagram then when you write your user action and based on the user action you can just um, write some data types that you will create on this step. So for example, if you're creating some payments, you will add some payment data type. And then based on, on this map, you will understand like what kind of database structure you will have. Mm, you will uh, you will have less like cognitive load on you and you will m move faster. So this diagram, they are pretty easy to do. You just think about your step that you, the user steps that uh, he or she will, will take, and just based on these steps, you write your uh, you draw your di diagram. Also, also I uh, really like this low fidelity wireframes. Uh, again, it can be done in different uh, types of apps. You can do this in this Miro whiteboard. whiteboard. You can do this in Fig, Fig Jam. It's pretty much the same. The the, uh, the, co the the most important idea is just super like, uh, like make low fidelity wireframe. Identify the uh, the screens of your app that that you will have, and then the kind of UE structure that you want to to achieve. So where is your header? What where is the, your like dashboard uh, settings page and and stuff? And how it will look like? So then you it's easier for you to to just um, you know to based on the wireframes make like the actual design. Uh, and talking about design, I want to. Like I'm not a designer myself, but I really like when the app look uh, look uh, modern and uh, high quality. You know, that professional. And I um, like I found myself that that using the kind of the UE library, for example, this untitled UE. I will share it everything that I'm dis we discussed in description and also during the video. So I find myself that that uh, using this library that is created by professional designers is super nice way to like without any design knowledge, start building better apps. Because usually these design lab libraries, they have some, and I want to mention, I'm not affiliate with this older product, it's just products that I use myself. So I just share in my experience and what I like. So it's just my like two cents about this. So what what is good about these um, libraries, you can have everything ready, uh, nicely, nicely designed, and just looking on these landing pages and all this uh, UE, elements you can um, you can find a lot of a lot of um, how to say um, inspiration and a lot of ideas for your main, for your own product so you just can i don't know like go to charts they have some different uh, blog post pricing page landing page uh, dashboards buttons so and just i mean just go Take this style from here, move it through to your bubble app, and you have your existing, you have your brand assets, basically your brand identity ready. So you can just start 
a billion as soon as possible without spending money on on, on design on hiring designer and uh, learning design yourself so and basically in, during the process you will learn a lot about design actually so yeah this is super cool and uh, about colors also the, you see i uh, usually start with two three main colors so my, i will take one color for errors one color for my primary elements and also there are some colors for grays so from white to, to dark gray that i will use for fonts i move all these colors to my style variable in a bubble so for example if I decide to change the color in a month of after a month of building I can do this just in one click Ch change one variable to another one so this is pretty cool okay let's let's go back to to our actual discussion yeah planning is super important uh, the resources I will leave everything in the description again without any affiliate links so this this is the uh, the library I, I use for everything I, I build I just I take this library as a as a my base uh, of my or what I'm building and then I build I I, I um, introduce my own idea to it so but this is kind of this is my um this is my reference to this I understand that this is nice this is nicely built nicely designed so I can trust it and then I can build on top of it and this book is um it's a refractory in UI this is a book about building nice user interfaces I highly recommend it if you want to get a uh, dig deeper into design and building nice nicely looking interfaces so I think it's super important if you're building with bubble Okay, next one is building with performance. This topic is, is we can like I don't know like record a course based on the performance topic. But um, what is the, what is needed to understand? It's um, you can you can't learn performance in one day or like one week. It is all. Um, a question of experience so you need to start building apps understand what's what's working good what's working bad and then based on this like build better and better start start fail fast repeat become better so this is kind of my approach to this but this book uh, uh this book is super super um famous in the bubble community uh it's pretty old but new edition was released like a couple days ago with the workflow units optimization uh paragraph so i highly recommend check this book if you want to learn about the performance so uh my approach was i uh started myself without reading it then i discovered this book i read it and then based on the uh, tips discussed in the book i started uh like in introducing improvements to my apps uh, i noticed uh, I, I noticed like a big change after reading this book highly recommend it if you want to understand performance better but again it's all question of experience you just start building just start start learning more about performance about optimization and stuff uh, next one reusable com components so um, <clears throat> what i noticed is um, as um, as i started also uh, become interested in traditional coding that like for example in react development it's all about uh, building with components so you identify a finished kind of the, the island of your app so it can be like finished logic search bar it can be input it can be like a form and then for example this form will consist of smaller components and uh these smaller con components can consist even smaller components so it's kind of you know the big component have a lot of smaller components inside the smaller components have a lot of even smaller components inside and i noticed this logic is like is super similar to bubble it's, it's kind of the same so this is why i'm always talking that uh, if you know bubble you can easily go to and start uh, working in react after like a week of learning some basic react practices and stuff because actually it's, it's how bubble works so um let me show you an example of my app so this app uh, this is one, one of my first one this is task management uh, task and project management but this is not that important <clears throat> what i want to discuss here is you see i have a really small amount of pages here and a lot of reusable components so how this uh how this app is structured is we have the main screen where we have like the floating groups view and this view consists of different re reusable components that act as um as a page and then based on the conditionals in uh, url i show different uh, different um, reusable components and then inside uh, every reusable component you can um, store more reusable components but it's not that uh, important for example if you have a, if i go to Kanban board I can for example move this header to a reusable component um, also but but it's not for, for me it's not it's not uh, it's not the case I I don't see, think it's that important I can just copy because I don't have reusable logic here I can just keep it like this 
but with pages, why, why, it's, why it's cool to have like a reusable component inside uh, inside page, uh, like uh, to, to make your pages as a reusable component? Because first, you don't need to wait till uh, um, as, your, as you, you change the screen of the app. For example, if we press the, one of the links on the header, I don't going to change the uh, the, the the page itself. I'm not going to wait at, uh, uh, for a server response. It will be, it, I will stay on the same page. I will ch just change the URL parameter and I will change the content that I show. So I, if the URL parameter is uh, projects, I will show this reusable component. And uh, the app in 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 if you uh, um, building like this, your app will work super fast. And also one important tip. To discuss is if you go for example in, in knowledge base and we oh sorry um let's go back if if i check here you see i have all the workflows related only to this page uh why i like th this way less cognitive load you don't see like 100 workflows on your page and you need like to press command f to find this the workflow you need you have everything super clean super organized in one place related to this page easy to add new features to this page if you need it easy to, to delete something debug and stuff highly recommend this um you win you will win in in terms of performance you will win in terms of organization and uh like cleanness of your of your app you you like if you come back in a month or two to the to the app you will be easy it will be easier for you to make to understand what's going on where to find the, the problem or uh, find the the, uh, the workflow you need and uh, move from there notes and comments again um, it sounds super simple but um, the main thing here is uh I will add also notes, comments, and uh, color coding. It seems like it's not that important till you need to come back to the project in a one month or two, when you already forgot uh, what's going on there, and you need to quickly understand where the workflow you need, where you have like all everything color color coded in your own logic. You will easily identify, for example, like I usually it depends on app, but some navigation workflows I color it in purple. The creation of the of, of different things I need to, I uh, color code it in uh, green and deletion in red and stuff. You can create your own logic, but this will help you stay organized, understand what's going on, and if you add some comments to the workflows, especially if it's some hard workload that need need some understanding for how to uh, it can be related to payments or uh, depend because um usually if you have payments and uh, complex payments you have different workloads associated with different like payment plans maybe pay, pay uh, account um, conditionals and stuff so uh try this uh, try the writing some uh, some comments and if you work in team this is like this is like must have if you comment, if you color code, everyone will understand. Everyone will be on the same page. Highly, highly recommend. Will 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 make your apps better for sure and your workflow better. Privacy rules. So I was always pretty skeptical about this um, till till the till the recent times. Uh, why is like this? Because I don't I I didn't think it's that much important. But uh, now I understand that I think this is actually like in a top tips that uh, and top po points that will set you apart from other developers because if you if you care about the data and the privacy of your data you care about your users and uh, this will make you a professional developer um, again uh, i don't think it's there are something to learn uh, you need just to read some basic docs and understand how to apply these privacy rules in your particular scenario on in your app because uh, from app to app, the privacy rule can can uh, vary from like super complex to super simple. Just, just depends on the, the app complexity itself. But but I will I need to mention the second book about uh, also that is super popular in the Bubble ecosystem and Bubble community. The book from the same author, uh, the Ultimate Guide for Bubble Security. Same I I, I huge fan about this author and um, i would say that uh, i after reading two of these books i um level up as a as a bubble developer I recommend this if you want to dig deeper in, in the privacy rule but it's not uh, that it's not necessary you can just read the docs and try it yourself it's nothing special to learn it's more about trying 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 and getting better in it but um don't leave privacy rules 
for later or something. I, I care about them from the day one of building. I would say this is this is how I think right now. So next steps uh, from this, uh, I highly recommend just trying stuff. Don't spend time learning too much. Try try build build for others. Try uh, play with uh, some fr freelance work. Find some clients. <clears throat> get real life experience. It's, it's always better to take some projects from other people to understand their needs, their uh, their ideas, and try to help them uh, and get some experience. You know, push your limits with templates and custom plugins. I had, um, myself I started building templates and plugins recently. I found this this nice way to contribute to community and also when you are especially with plugins when you uh, introduce some custom coding to to uh, like this bubble story you know you can understand the platform better and you can in, like extend the functionality of your apps um, for me it's super exciting and I think this is like um, them like as as you as you get better with bubble you will you will move to at the end you will move to code it because because at the end, all we do with Bubble is actually coding. We're just using the visual interface for this. And yeah, and the last tip is to learn traditional coding. It's just, it helped me understand the Bubble platform and become better in building with Bubble. As you understand, like more, uh, and learning some, um, some uh, programming language, you understand what is going on in your own app and the backend. And uh, you get better, you build better apps, you understand better, you can help your clients, your people and yourself, like, much faster and and better and find better solutions this is basically it this was my tips i hope you like it if you like it leave some comments leave some likes um, i appreciate a subscription for this channel i i will try to make as much as as possible uh, valuable valuable content for you so you can improve as a bubble developer and as a software engineer in general again guys thanks for watching and have a great day bye bye